Hello, Martin Benedict here for ChessPuzzle.net. Today I'm going to show you the latest content updates for Puzzle Academy. First some numbers. I've added 50,000 additional puzzles to Puzzle Academy since October and there are now more than 200,000 puzzles included with Puzzle Academy. I've also added 9 new guides and 10 new levels this month, including the important endgame Rook and Bishop against Rook. There are 9 new guides included. I've linked all of them here in this blog post about the update. You can read them even if you are not a premium member yet and see what you can learn and practice with Puzzle Academy. For example, here is the guide about the new skill Intermediate Check to avoid checkmate. All of these guides include an explanation about the motive, examples with explanations, some guides on visualization and how you can spot these tactics, and a list of related motives. Now let's talk about the new endgame. Winning with Rook and Bishop against Rook. This is the first endgame in the endgames course with five pieces. And it's one of the most important in practice. Usually this endgame is a draw, but it's not easy to defend. And even very strong players can make mistakes in this endgame. Especially with fast time controls like blitz and rapid games or if you are in time trouble. Even if your opponent has made a mistake and the position is now winning, the winning maneuvers aren't easy at all. In fact, and I didn't know this when I started working on this endgame, some of the positions are so complex that you need more than 50 moves to win. Under the current 50 moves rule, these positions will be a draw. But they are so complicated that no human can play them accurately. And only the table base will show you how you can win. For Puzzle Academy, I've split this endgame into four different levels. So you can start practicing with easier positions where you can win in just a few moves and work your way up to more and more difficult positions. Okay, let me explain why it's so important to practice this endgame. So for example, here I have this book, 100 Endgames You Must Know. It's a very good endgame book and it's a bestseller, very popular. But if you look up this endgame, this is endgame 94 uh, in this book. And they immediately start with the Philidor position, which is extremely complicated already. So you need 20 moves to win the Philidor position. So this will be here in level three or four. And it's not easy at all. You need like five different maneuvers. And okay, if you look at this end game in the book, you can remember these maneuvers. And if you set up the same position, okay, you will solve this. But if the position is slightly different, I tried this while working on this endgame, then you aren't sure which maneuver applies to which position and it's very easy to make a mistake and the win is gone. So that's why I think it's very nice that you can now practice this endgame with Puzzle Academy. There are so many examples and yeah, you can learn this step by step. There are a few easy maneuvers you can start with in the lower levels and then in the higher levels you will have to apply more and more maneuvers and in the correct positions and in the correct order. Okay, let's have a look at an example from this endgame from level 2. Okay, in this position already most of the white pieces are in good positions. The black king is on the back rank, the rook is on the seventh rank, uh, restricting the king to the back rank. Our bishop is in the center of the board and we just have to bring our king to the sixth rank so that all of our pieces are in good positions and we have to try to checkmate the king with our rook and bishop and the black rook will try to prevent checkmate. Usually the best position for the black rook would also be here on the seventh rank. That's called the second rank defense, but here the rook is already restricted to defend from behind. It's pinning our bishop against the king. But now we were threatening checkmate and the only move for black was to move the king to b8. Now if we give a check on the back rank, the king can always escape to the a7 square. So now we can give a check on b7 
And then the king won't be able to escape to the corner because then we could give a discover check and win the rook. So the king will have to go back towards the center where it's easier for white to threaten checkmate because our king and bishop are also in the center. Okay, let's give this check. The king goes back and now we can threaten checkmate again by moving the rook to a7. And then black won't be able to defend this king b8 because on a8 the rook will be protected by our bishop and will be checkmate on the back rank anyway. So the only move for black to defend against this checkmate threat is to move the rook to b2 so it can interpose the check on b8. Okay, let's play this check. Black moves the rook to b2 and now if you go to a8, as I said, the rook can interpose and we don't make any progress. But now we can do this important rook swing maneuver. Now we move the rook to the other side of the board. We can go to f7, we can also go to g7 or h7, it doesn't matter. And we'll threaten checkmate again on the back rank. Black has only one defense against this checkmate threat. The king will have to go to b8. But now that this rook is on b2, we can then actually proceed to give a check on the back rank. And when the king goes to a7, we can give check with the rook here. And on the next move, give a check here. And with a skewer, win the rook. Okay. Black gives an intermediate check here, which we can block with our bishop. That doesn't change anything. Now the king still has to go to b8. And actually, it's going to be a checkmate instead of a skewer. So here it's checkmate. And in the solution view, I can show you the other line. So here, if black didn't give the intermediate check and went with the king immediately to b8, then we would have been able to give a check here. King goes to a7, we give a check here. And the king must go to the b file, and we can give the skewer here and win the rook and checkmate a few moves later. In the tactics course, we are continuing with the theme of intermediate moves and checks. So last month there was a new skill, intermediate check to avoid checkmate. And this month there's another new skill, intermediate check to avoid forks. Let's have a look at this example. So here we could obviously just capture the knight on g2, but then black would be able to give a rook fork on e2, forking our king and the bishop, and black would regain the piece and the game would probably end in a draw. However, we can give an intermediate check with the bishop on b3, and when the king moves we can now capture the knight and we'll be a piece up and win the game. And as always, with this kind of puzzle, if you go to the solution view, you can actually see the line that you should avoid. Not king takes g2 because of rook e2 check, king f1, rook takes c2. In the combinations course, I've added level 3 for the trade and discovered a tech skill. Let's have a look at an example. These are five move puzzles. So this is already a little bit tricky. First, we can trade on d5. And after black recaptures with the bishop, note that if black recaptured with the queen instead, we could just play takes f6 check with a discovered attack on the queen and we'll win the queen. So that's why black has to recapture with the bishop. But now we can also play knight takes f6 check, again with a discovered attack by our bishop on f3 on the bishop on d5. And now we can play another trade here. Note that by recapturing with the pawn here also the e-file opened for our rook. And now we can trade on d5 and black has to recapture with the queen. Note that the queen no longer defends e8. So now we can play rook e8 check, black recaptures with the rook, which is now deflected from protecting the queen. So now we can take the queen and we'll have a winning material advantage. So let's 
take the queen. Let's go to the solution view and as always you can see that there are automatic text annotations to the motifs present in this combination. So here the trade is annotated, the white knight trades and lures black's bishop to the square d5. And here also the discovered attack is annotated and the opening of the e-file is annotated and here the deflection is correctly annotated and let's have a look at this variation. If the king moved here then we could have traded the queens and opening the eighth rank for our rook so that the rook can now capture the other rook on b8 which is no longer defended by this rook. In the checkmate patterns course I've added a new checkmate pattern, which is called killbox mate. In the killbox mate, the queen and rook form a 3x3 box that traps and checkmates the king. That's why this pattern is called killbox mate. Okay, let's have a look at an example. So it's checkmate in two moves. We can give a check here on b8. Only move is king to d7. And now we can give a checkmate on d6. Let's go to the solution view and get the explanation here for the killbox mate. This is explained with text. You can hover over the killbox mate term to get some more explanations here. And as you see, the rook is next to the king delivering checkmate. It's protected by the queen, so the king is not able to capture the rook. And the queen here also prevents the escape. It guards all the escape squares with the exception of e7, which is blocked by the rook. Last month I started a skill difficult checkmates in the checkmate combinations course. And this month I'm adding level 2, which includes checkmates in 7 moves. So these are already very difficult and I'm going to show you this beautiful example. If you want to try this yourself, you can pause the video and click on the diagram here in this blog post to solve the puzzle. This is from a recent Bundesliga game. Jan Gustafsson is white and he plays against Spartak Gregorian. And Jan played a really beautiful combination here. Okay, first we capture the pawn on f7 with check. King has to go to g8. Now we play knight h6 check back and king has to go back into the corner. So what has changed by capturing this pawn? Well, now we can give this check on f8, sacrificing our rook. Black has to recapture with the queen. And now we can sacrifice another piece on g7 with check and the queen has to take it. And now the back rank is weak. The back rank is completely unprotected and we can give queen d8 check and the black queen cannot go to g8 because our knight on h6 is also guarding that square. And now it's checkmate. Fantastic combination by Jan Gustafsson in the Bundesliga. In the defense course, I've added a new skill, defend against check and avoid a pin. Let's have a look at an example. Black just played queen c5 check. How do we defend against that? Well, there are three legal moves. We can play queen e3, queen f2, or king h1. So let's have a look at these alternatives. Queen e3 is obviously bad because the queen can just take it. Queen f2 is also bad because then black can play bishop d4, pinning our queen against our king and we lose the queen and the game. So the only good move is king h1. And as always with this kind of puzzle, the situation to avoid, the pin here is also explained in the solution. So king h1 is the correct move, but not queen f2 because of bishop d4 pinning the queen and winning the queen. In the attacking course, I'm continuing the attacking the uncastled king skill with level 4. And here is another very beautiful example. This is from the Frauen Bundesliga, and Fiona Sieber played against Sarah Holt, and she played the wonderful queen sacrifice, queen takes c4 here. 
So as you see, the king is still in the center on e8, but at the moment it looks like the king is not in that much danger because black has this pawn chain here, f7, e6, and d5, and it's not clear how white's pieces can circumvent this pawn chain and attack the king. But with this beautiful queen sacrifice, Fiona opened the d-file, and now after the pawn recaptures on c4, these two rooks build a very powerful battery here on the d-file, and now this king doesn't look safe. But you can't give a check on d8 at the moment, because the queen on b6 is still protecting that square. So Fiona followed up with another sacrifice. She sacrificed her bishop on c6, and if the king goes to f8, now we can go to d8 with the rook, because the king is no longer protecting that square, and after the queen takes, we uh, retake with the rook, and it's checkmate. So I also want to show you the game continuation. As always, in the solution view, you can also see the game. And uh, we click here, and after the queen sacrifice, followed by the bishop sacrifice, black found a reply which is a little bit better than featured in this puzzle. Rook d7, and now Fiona took the rook on d7, and after king d8, she also captured the knight on a4, and now white's already material up. Uh, she has a rook, a knight, and a bishop for the queen, which is already more than enough, and the attack continues. So if you are a premium member already, thank you very much for your support, much appreciated, and I wish you a lot of fun with these new skills and all of the new puzzles. If you are not a premium member yet, you can play all of these puzzles for free, click the diagrams here in this blog post, and you can also read all the guides for free to see what's on offer. You can find out more about Puzzle Academy on our landing page here. There are more explanations here how Puzzle Academy works. And if you want to join Puzzle Academy, you can become a premium member. Then you will no longer see any ads on the website and you get access to Puzzle Academy. And you'll support the website and my project to provide the best chess puzzles on the internet.